I'm for good times, the devil said as he takes us away. And now we need to turn to Jesus Christ as he saves us. And if you want to get out alive, whoa, turn to Jesus Christ. If you want to get out alive, whoa, run for Jesus Christ. And we say, you won't be long till we make it on the paradise. In heaven with Jesus Christ, we won't be devil no more for our sins as he takes us to hell with him if we misbehave and don't obey Jesus Christ above that rotten no good devil as he wants to take us away to his hell instead we want to go to God and heaven and if you want to get up and fly, whoa, fly to Jesus Christ. Our souls need to fly to Jesus Christ when we escape this earth. With our death, we can choose to fly to Jesus Christ in heaven. Instead of descending our souls to hell with Satan, that no good rotten devil. And he wants to see us burn the devil. He wants us to learn so badly with him in hell as he disobeyed Jesus Christ and God the Father in paradise in heaven when he was so good lucifer was the holiest of all angels god made him so pure once long ago and he destroyed jesus christ and god the father and the holy spirit in heaven and made the angels turn against God, his mighty angels in heaven, to fight on the battle between good versus evil. Satan wanted to ha cause more than half the angels to be on his side so he could defeat God and end him all the days of his life and to be god over god the father that no good satan the archangel lucifer betrayed us and now he's no longer an archangel lucifer is now satan the devil he plagues this earth with sin rotten corruption he causes us to burn in hell with him. If we so choose to burn and do our sins, instead of rise up from our sins and choose God the Father to obey all his commands and live holy lives with Jesus Christ as our holy Savior. And I said, it won't be long till we end up in paradise. Die for Jesus Christ. We don't want to die for the devil. No, don't die for sin. Rise up from your sin for God's greater glory in heaven. With Jesus Christ, we want to rise. And I 
listen, it won't be long till we end up with Jesus Christ. Oh God, we love you so much in your paradise that we long to go one day. This earth has our soul parishes. We gotta choose heaven for you, Jesus Christ, to love and see you in your holy paradise. We love you, God. Please help us to get to you. And if we wanna roll over and die, no, we can't for the devil, and he calls us to sin, but we can't roll over and die for him. And God, we want to live for you, Jesus Christ, all the days of our lives. Why do we have to be plagued on this sin on earth? Time for goodbyes as he fades away. That devil will burn and rot in his evil place. We are on chapter. 21 and 22 we'll be reading today on the first book of kings i don't know why but the song was calling me a uh, three days grace uh, with ghost rider on his motorcycle um, shout out to those guys they produced a very beautiful song uh, elijah's grim prophecy grim like the grim reaper and that like he looks like the grim reaper with his chain slaying people um Ghost Rider. Um, Nicholas Cage used to be my brother's favorite actor at the time. He loves Nicholas Cage um, in his movies, and uh, my brother Andre. This is for you. All right. We'll start with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and of God. Heal us and guide us today. As we choose your paradise instead of Satan's. Hell and no good. Burning fire. His lake, his Gehenna, his hell, his Hades. But he wants to slay us. But God, help us to not choose Satan. God, but help us to choose you, God the Father, above Satan and vanquish him in our lives. Your name Jesus Christ we pray amen all right chapter 21 the first book of Kings Naboth's vineyard and then Elijah's grim prophecy and then we'll read chapter 22 in the book of Kings chapter 21 verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near to my house, and I will give you for it a better vineyard than if. Or if it seem good to you, I will give you its worth in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. And Ahab went to his house sad and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down on his bed and turned away his face and would, not, and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to and said to him, But Jezebel his wife came to him and said to him, 
Why is your spirit so sad that you refuse to eat food? And he said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it better than it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said to him, Are you really king over Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let your heart be merry. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote a letter in Ahab's name and sealed it with his ring, and sent the letter to the elders and to the nobles who dwelt in the city with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Then bring two wicked men and set them opposite to him. Then bring two wicked men and set them opposite him, and let them testify against him, saying, Naboth has reviled God and the king, and then take him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who dwelt in the city of Naboth, did as Jezebel had sent to them, and as it was written in the letter which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And they brought two wicked men and seated them opposite him. And the wicked men witnessed against Naboth, saying, Naboth reviled God and the king, and they stoned him outside the city and stoned him so that he died. And they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned, and he is dead. And when Jezebel heard that Naboth was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, for he has gone there to possess it. And you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, you have killed, and thus, and you shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, you have killed, and behold, you have also taken possession. Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick your sir, uh, in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick your blood, even yours. And Ahab said to Elisha, Have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you, because you have exalted yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon you, and, I, and will pluck one by one your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab every male child, and everyone who has and everyone who has authority in governing Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, for the, provocate, for the provocation wherewith you have provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also the Lord spoke, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel in the inheritance, in the inheritance which is in Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dogs who dies in the city shall the dogs eat. And anyone who dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like Ahab who thought to do evil in the sight of the Lord whom Jezebel his wife incited. And he did very abominable and he did very abominably in following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. And when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth upon his body, and fasted and lay in sackcloth, and walked barefooted. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring evil in the day and I will not bring evil I will not bring the evil in his days but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house 
chapter 22. And three years passed without war between Aram and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to Ahab, the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramath Gilead belongs to us? And how long shall we keep still and not take it out of the hand of the king of Aram? And he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to battle to Ramath Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said, I will go as you go, my people as your people, and my horses as your horses. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray, for the word of the Lord this day. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go to Ramath Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver the Arameans out into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a pro is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. His name is Micah, the son of Imlah. But I hate him, for he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. The king of Israel called a eunuch and said, Make haste and bring here Micah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, were, uh, were seated each on his throne, clothed with robes of different colors, at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And, the, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. And Zedekiah, the son of a Canaanitish woman, made for herself horns of iron, and he said, for himself uh, horns of iron and he said thus says the Lord with these you shall pierce the Arameans until you have destroyed them and all the prophets prophesied so saying go up to Ramath Gilead and you will triumph for the Lord shall deliver them into your hands O king and the messenger who went to call Micah spoke to him saying behold now the words of the false prophets with one accord have predicted fav favorably concerning the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and you also predict favorably. And Micah said, As the Lord lives who whatsoever the Lord says to me, that will I speak. And so he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micah, shall we go to Ramath Galid to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go up and be victorious, for the Lord shall deliver them into your hand, O king. And the king said to him, how many times shall I adjure you that you tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And Micah said, I saw Israel scattered upon the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his own house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? And Micah said, Hear therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramath Galid? And one said in, his, in this matter, and another said in that matter. And there came forth a spirit and, st that, and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade you. And, and said, uh, and came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go forth and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said to him, You shall persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning you. But Zedekiah, the son of the Canaanitish woman, went near and st struck Micah on his cheek and said to him, Which way has the Spirit of the Lord departed from me and spoken to you? And Micah said to him, Behold, you shall see in that day when you shall go into an inner chamber to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micah and deliver him to 
Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Josh, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of aff affliction, and with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micah said, If you return in peace, then the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hear all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramath Galid, and the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. But you put on your robes, and the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Aram commanded the thirty-two captains of his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only the king of Israel. And when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they thought he was the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried. And when the captains of the chariots saw that he was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew his bow toward him at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his breast, uh, the joints of the breastplate. Wherefore the king said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and carry me out of the army, for the pangs of death have come upon me. And the battle grew fiercer that day, and the king was standing in the chariot facing the Arameans, Arameans, and died that evening, and the blood ran out of his wound into the hollow of his chariot. And at sunset a herald proclaimed throughout the army, saying, Go every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried him in Samaria. And they washed the chariot on the hill of Samaria, and they washed his armor, and the dogs licked up his blood according to the word of the Lord which he spoke. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house which he built, and all the cities that he built, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 30 and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Arubah the daughter of Shehil, Shilhi and he waved and he walked in all the ways of Asa his father he did not turn aside from doing that from doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Nevertheless, he did not remove the temples of the idols, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the kings of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and all the might that he showed and how he wared, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he removed from the land. There was then no king who reigned in Edom, Jehoshaphat built ships at Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold. But they did not go, for the ships were broken at Hezion Gibber. Then Ahaziah, Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not consent. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Joran, his son, reigned in his stead. Ahaziah, the son of of Ahab began to reign over Israel and Samaria in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah and he reigned 22 years over Israel and he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father and in the ways of his mother and in the ways of Jeroboam the son of Nebat who made Israel sin for he served Baal and worshiped him and provoked him and uh, for he served Baal and worshiped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done All right, in the second book of Kings will begin tomorrow. And with that, we will close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and God, help us to turn to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, as our Savior, as our King above all kings. 
You are our king above all these kings of the Old Testament and on earth. Because you are in heaven above, as king of kings, lord of lords. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ, amen. Peace. See you guys tomorrow. God bless.